Well, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. We've had a very amazing two-day period in Brussels. And uh, we really accomplished a lot with respect to NATO. For years, presidents have been coming to these meetings and uh, talked about the expense, the tremendous expense for the United States. And uh, tremendous progress has been made. Everyone's agreed to substantially up their commitment. They're going to up it at levels that they've never thought of before. Uh, prior to last year, where I attended my first meeting, it was going down. Uh, the amount of money being spent by uh, countries was going down and down very substantially. And now it's going up very substantially, and commitments were made. Uh, only five of 29 countries were making their commitment, uh, and that's now changed. The commitment was at 2 percent. Ultimately, that'll be going up quite a bit higher than that. So we are uh, — we made a tremendous amount of progress today. Uh, it's been about at a minimum, they estimate, and they're going to be giving you exact numbers. But since last year, they've raised an additional $33 billion uh, that's been put up by the various countries, not including the United States. And the United States' uh, commitment to NATO is very strong, remains very strong, but primarily because everyone, the spirit they have, uh, the amount of money they're willing to spend, the additional money that they will be putting up has been really, uh, really amazing to see it. To see the level of spirit in that room is incredible. And I hope that we're going to be able to get along with Russia. I think that we probably will be able to. Uh, the people in the room think so, but uh, they nevertheless, they really stepped up their commitment and uh, stepped it up like they never have before. So we p took in an additional 33. Uh, the number could actually be higher than 40 when they give you the final number. The Secretary General Stoltenberg will be giving those numbers sometime today, probably in his concluding a press statement, uh, but uh, we are uh, we are doing numbers like they've never done before or ever seen before, and you'll be seeing that, and I guess you'll be hearing that uh, a little bit later. Okay, uh, we have our Secretary of State, as you know, and we have uh, John is here. So if you have any questions for the three of us, uh, Mike Pompeo uh, just got back from a third trip, as you know, to North Korea. He's become a true expert on the trips to North Korea, the best way to get there, the best way to get out. And uh, he gets along very well, and he's doing a great job over there. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, President, Tara McCauley with BBC. Can you tell us whether or not you warned people that the U.S. would pull out of NATO if they weren't meeting their spending goal? Uh, I told people that I'd be very unhappy if they didn't up their commitments very substantially, because the United States has been paying a tremendous amount, probably 90 percent of the cost of NATO. And now people are going to start, and countries are going to start upping their commitments. So I let them know yesterday, actually. I was surprised that you didn't pick it up. It took till today. But yesterday, uh, I let them know that I was extremely unhappy with what was happening. And uh, they have substantially upped their commitment. Yeah. And now we're very happy. and. Uh, have a very, very powerful, very, very strong NATO, much stronger than it was two days ago. Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. How are you? I know. You're very famous on television. <laughs> Well, they were uh, probably worried because the United States was not being treated fairly, but now we are because the commitment has been up so much. So now they are. And I was very firm yesterday. Uh, you have to understand, I know a lot of the people in the room. I was here last year. I let them know last year uh, in a less firm manner, but pretty firm, and they raised an additional $33 billion, I think going to $40 billion, but it's $33 billion as of today. Uh, uh, and then today and yesterday, I was probably a little bit more firm. But I believe in NATO. I think NATO is a very important, probably the greatest ever done. But the United States was paying for anywhere from 70 to 90 percent of it, depending on the way you calculate. That's not fair to the United States. In addition to that, as you know, we're in negotiations with the EU, and we're going to be meeting with them next week. We've been treated very unfairly on trade. Our farmers have been shut out of the European Union. 
Now, you could say they're different, but basically, to a large extent, they're the same countries. So uh, I think we're going to be ultimately treated fairly on trade. We'll see what happens. But I can tell you that NATO now is really a, a fine-tuned machine. People are paying money that they never paid before. Uh, they're happy to do it. And the United States is being treated much more fairly. Yes, sir. News hour. Did you win any concessions um, in your meeting and discussions with the German yeah. Chancellor when it comes to German defense spending and also this issue of uh, purchasing energy yeah. from Russia? And secondly, uh, what would you say to your critics that say by creating this scene here at NATO, you're only enabling President Putin in Russia to further disturb things in Ukraine and Georgia? In well, if you consider uh, putting up tremendously you know, the additional funds at a level that nobody's ever seen before, I don't think that's helping Russia. Uh, I think that uh, NATO is much stronger now than it was two days ago. I think that NATO was not doing what they were supposed to be doing, a lot of the countries, and we were doing much more than we should have been doing. Frankly, we were carrying too much of a burden. That's why we call it burden sharing. I was using the term a lot today, burden sharing. We had a fantastic meeting at the end. Uh, 29 countries, and uh, they are putting up a lot. Uh, Germany has uh, increased very substantially their time period, and Germany's coming along, and we still have to figure out what's going on with the pipeline, because the pipeline is coming in from Russia. So we're going to have to figure that out. I brought it up. Nobody brought it up but me, and we all are talking about it now. And actually, I think the world is talking about it now, maybe more than anything else. But we're going to figure that out. Uh, but uh, — and, frankly, maybe everybody's going to have a good relationship with Russia, so there'll be a lot less problem with the pipeline. But, uh, to me, that was a very major point of contention. Uh, we discussed it at length today. Germany has agreed to do a lot better than they were doing, and we're very happy with that. We had a very good relationship with Angela Merkel. Yes. Mr. President. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi. Thank you. Margaret Tala from Bloomberg. Yes. Um, After all these years, I know, Margaret. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm being dense here, but could you just clarify, are, are you still threatening to potentially pull the United States out of NATO for any reason? And do you believe you can do that uh, without Congress's explicit support and approval? I think I probably can, but that's unnecessary. And uh, the people have stepped up today like they've never stepped up before. And remember the word, $33 billion more they're paying. And you'll hear that from the Secretary General in a little while. He thanked me, actually. He, he actually thanked me. And everybody in the room thanked me. There's a great collegial spirit in that room that I don't think they've had in many years. Uh, they're very strong. So, uh, yeah, very, very unified, very strong, no problem, right? We're yes. in NATO. No, no, okay. No problem. Mr. President, uh, Jonathan Lemire with the Associated Press. Sure. Um, you have said previously you wanted the countries to step up their spending to 2 percent. Yesterday, there was a suggestion it might be 4 percent or perhaps 2 percent at a much quicker timetable. Yeah. Can you clarify what did they commit to doing? Yeah. Is that satisfactory to you? So what they're doing is spending uh, at a much faster clip. They're going up to the 2 percent level. Now, you have to understand, some of them have parliaments. They have their own congresses. They have a lot of things they have to go to. So, you know, they're here as a prime minister, as a president, and they can't necessarily go in and say, uh, this is what we're going to do. But they're going back for approvals. Uh, some are at 2 percent. Others have agreed definitely to go to 2 percent. And some are going back to get the approval, and which they will get to go to 2 percent. After we're at 2 percent, we'll start talking about going higher. But I said, ultimately, we should be, in years in advance, we should be at 4 percent. I think 4 percent is the right number. Now, the United States, depending on the way you calculate it, was at 4.2 percent. And I said, that's unfair. And we have the largest GDP by far, especially since we've increased it by so much since a thing called the election. Our GDP has gone way up. And so the fact that our GDP went way up that means we're paying for even more, which is very unfair. So I explained that. Uh, we, uh, we will go to much higher than 2 percent into the future, but right now we're getting people up to 2 percent, and that'll take place over a fairly short period of time, a short number of years. Okay? Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Tomislav Krasnets from Večer News, Croatian daily newspaper. We understand your message. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Soccer, Thank you. We understand your message. But some people ask themselves, will you be tweeting differently once you board the Air Force One? 
Thank you. No, that's other people that do that. I don't. I'm very consistent. I'm a very stable genius. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jeremy Diamond with CNN. How are you? Um, quick question with regards to uh, Germany and the uh, comments that you made uh, yesterday. Um, do you feel like, given the threats that you made about potentially leaving NATO, about uh, insulting Germany's sovereignty, it appears, by suggesting they are totally controlled by Russia, do you feel like that's an effective way to uh, conduct diplomacy? Uh, and secondly, would you be able to be a little bit more specific about the commitments that you secure today uh, with regards to increasing financial commitment? Is there an updated timeline? Are there uh, specific countries you could cite? Because a majority of them are already planning planning to meet that 2 percent threshold by 2024? No, uh, mon many of them. In fact, Germany was going to be uh, in the year 2028 or 30. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very effective way to, uh, to deal, but I didn't deal exactly the way you said. I have great respect for Germany. My father's from Germany. Uh, both of my parents are from the EU, despite the fact they don't treat us well on trade, but I think that'll change also. And I think we'll see that because on the 25th of July, they're coming in to start negotiations with me. We'll see. Uh, and if they don't negotiate in good faith, we'll do something having to do with all of the millions of cars that are coming into our country and being taxed at a virtually zero level, at a very low level. Uh, but, Jeremy, I think it's been a very effective way of negotiating. But I'm not negotiating. I just want fairness for the United States. We're paying for far too much of NATO. NATO is very important. But NATO is helping Europe more than it's helping us. At the same time, it's very good for us. So we have now got it to a point where people are paying a lot more money. Uh, and that's starting really last year. It really had as you were there last year. And last year, we had a big impact. Again, we took in $33 billion more. And if you ask Secretary General Stoltenberg, he gives us total credit meaning me, I guess, in this case, total credit, because I said it was unfair. Now, what has happened is presidents over many years, from Ronald Reagan to Barack Obama, they came in, they said, OK, hey, do the best you can, and they left. Nobody did anything about it. And it got to a point where the United States was paying for 90 percent of NATO. And that's not fair. So it's changed. We had a really good meeting today. We had a great meeting in terms of um, in terms of getting along, I know most of the people in the room because of last year, because of the year and a half that we've been in office, year and a half plus, but we have a great relationship. Everybody in that room, by the time we left, got along and they agreed to pay more and they agreed to pay it more quickly. Yeah, go ahead, Phil. Hey, Mr. President, Philip Rucker from The Washington Post. Do you, you tweeted yesterday, uh, what good is NATO? And you've talked about NATO as an alliance that benefits Europe, that defends and protects Europe. Do you see any value of NATO to the United States vis-a-vis -vis Russia? Does it help protect the United States from Russia, in your view? I think it's another very strong ally, as together it's much stronger than, obviously, individual countries. Uh, I think it's the way we have it now. I think it's a much — I think NATO got — uh, you know what was happening with spending prior to my getting into office. The numbers were going down. Now the numbers have gone up like a rocket ship. Uh, the numbers have gone up a lot, and they've gone up rapidly, and they're now going up further. So I think NATO is going to be very, very effective. I'm very impressed with and, — and really know, and he's a friend of mine — but Secretary General Stoltenberg has done a fantastic job and putting it all together. And we were the ones that really uh, we gave him an extension of his contract, as you know. Uh, I think he's done a really good job. Uh, I think that when I was saying that, I am very concerned with the pipeline. I don't like the pipeline. And when I talk about NATO, I say, how do you have NATO? And then you have somebody paying the people that you're protecting against. But maybe we'll get along with the group that we're protecting against. I think that's a real possibility. As you know, I'm meeting with President Putin on Monday. And I think we go into that meeting not looking for so much. We want to find out about Syria. We will, of course, ask your favorite question about meddling. I will be asking that question again. Uh, but uh, we'll also be talking about uh, other things. We'll be talking about Ukraine. Ukraine was here today, by the way. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting to hear what they had to say. So, excuse me? Well, he may. I mean, look, he may. You know, what am I going to do? If he may deny it. I mean, it's one of those things. So all I can do is say, did you, and uh, don't do it again. But he may deny. I mean, well, I'll, you'll be the first to know. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. 
Yes, go ahead. Mr. President, Robert Wall with the Wall Street Journal. Yes. If Hi, the Germans and the Canadians and others don't come up to 2%, what is your fallback position? How will you up the pressure to make them actually? Well, they will. Uh, they will. I have no doubt about it. They all made commitments, uh, and they will be up to 2%. It'll be over a period, a relatively short period of years. Okay? Thank you so much. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Georgian TV, Palestrian News. Uh, Mr. President, what do you think uh, today needs, uh, needs or not Georgia most support from NATO? And I want to ask about... Georgia? It. They yes. were here today represented. You know. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, will you talk about Georgia in a meeting with, Mr., uh, with the President Putin? Well, they were here. They made a very favorable impression. And uh, we listened to their plight. It's a tough situation with Georgia, but uh, they made a very favorable impression in the room. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go. Go. One more. One more. Go ahead. Go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you really did. Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I had a question as well, but nonetheless, I'll ask her. Uh, will you? Will you recognize? Go ahead. Will you recognize uh, Russia's annex? Will you recognize Crimea as part of Russia when you meet? Well, President that's an interesting question because you know, long before I got here, President Obama allowed that to happen. Uh, that was on his watch, not on my watch. You know, people like to say, "Oh, Crimea," but the fact is, uh, they built bridges to Crimea. Uh, they just opened a big bridge that was started years ago. Uh, they built, I think, a submarine port, substantially added billions of dollars. Uh, so that was on Barack Obama's watch. That was not on Trump's watch. Would I have allowed it to happen? No, I would not have allowed it to happen. But he did allow it to happen. So that was his determination. What will happen with Crimea from this point on? That I can't tell you. But I'm not happy about Crimea. But again, that was Barack Obama's watch, not Trump's watch. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. It's, uh, Jeff Mason from Reuters, sure. Mr. President. Uh, I know, Jeff. Regarding your summit with President Putin, will you be raising arms control issues? Would you like yes. to? Would you like to extend New Start, and will you raise uh, concerns about violations of the INF Treaty? Yes. And as a follow-up to the NATO meeting today, will you suggest to him, or would you consider stopping military exercises in the Baltic states if that's something that he requests? Well, perhaps we'll talk about that. But I will say that we are going to be talking about those three issues and many more. We'll be talking about it, Jeff. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Ivo Caizzi, Corriere della Sera. We are in the NATO quarters that costed almost the double as planned before. I would like to know if you are planning uh, to guarantee the taxpayers that uh, the new money that is flowing into NATO will be spent in the best possible way, especially the money coming from countries that have uh, several problems with the public finances. Well, the money will be spent properly. And one of the things that we have, we have many wealthy countries with us today, but we have some that aren't so wealthy. And they did ask me if they could buy the military equipment and could I help them out? And we will help them out a little bit. We're not going to finance it for them, but we'll make sure that they're able to get payments and various other things so they can buy. Because the United States makes, by far, the best military equipment in the world, the best jets, the best missiles, the best guns, the best everything. We make, by far, I mean, that's one thing. I, I guess I assumed it uh, prior to taking office, but I really learned since being president, our equipment is so much better than anybody else's equipment. Uh, when you look at our companies, Lockheed and Boeing and Grumman, what the material, the, the equipment that we make is so far superior. Everybody wants to buy our equipment. In fact, it's a question, can they make it? Because they are doing very well. Can they make it for so many people? So we are helping some of those countries get online and buy the best equipment. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm Kristen Brown with Fox News. Um, on your upcoming summit with President Putin, did any of your allies here express any specific concerns or talk to you about any messages that they'd like you to take with you when you go to the yeah, summit? Yeah, just the opposite of concern. They actually, and they'll probably come out with a little bit of an edict, but they actually uh, thanked me for meeting with President Putin. I look forward to the meeting. Uh, they thanked me. They thought it was a great thing that I was doing it, and they gave us our best wishes, or their best wishes. Now, uh, with that being said, we'll see what happens. Just a loose meeting. It's not going to be big schedule. I don't think it should take a very long period of time. And we'll see where it leads. But it could lead to productive, something very productive. And maybe it's not.
But I, I think meeting with people is great. We had a great meeting with Chairman Kim. And I'll tell you, Mike Pompeo did a fantastic job. I might ask you to say a few words, Mike, while you're here. Just one second. Mike, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so I did. I, I returned, uh, uh, actually came straight from North Korea with a couple of stops here to Brussels. Um, we had a, a productive conversation. Uh, there, there remains a great deal of work to do. Um, but I think most importantly, uh, my counterpart, Kim Young-chol, made uh, a commitment consistent with what President Trump was able to achieve with Chairman Kim, which was they intend to denuclearize, they're going to accomplish it, and now the task is to get it implemented. I think oh, just, just to finish on that, you know, uh, so important. That was an amazing, really an amazing meeting, I thought. And I really think that we established very good relationships. We'll see where it all ends. But there have been no missile tests. There have been no research. There has been — they have blown up a site. I hear they're blowing up another site, missile site. Uh, they've taken down all of the propaganda. In fact, somebody said there's no more music playing at the borderline. You know, the music was going on for many years. They said recently that, wow, there's no more of the heavy music and the propaganda. They've uh, — they've done a lot of things. And we got back our three hostages. So uh, it's a good — it's a good process. But the main thing is, there have been no rocket launches. There have been no missile tests. Uh, there's been no nuclear tests, no explosions, no nothing for almost nine months. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. Sure. You and McCaskill from The Guardian. Um, your trip to the U.K. There are lots of protests planned in London and elsewhere. How do you feel to, about that? I think it's fine. I mean, I think they like me a lot in the U.K. I think they agree with me on immigration. I'm very strong on immigration. I, I made a point today. I said, you've got to stop. You're ruining your — you're going to have a lot of problems. You see what's going on throughout the world with immigration. I probably at least partially won an election because of immigration. If you look at Italy, Giuseppe, who I got to know quite well over the last month and a half. He won his election because of strong immigration policies on Italy. I think that uh, a lot of the people in the U.K. — I think that's why Brexit happened. Now, I don't know what's going on with the negotiation. Who knows? But — and I guess that's become a very interesting point of contention. I said I'm going to a few hot spots. We have NATO, then we have the U.K., and then we have Putin. And I said Putin may be the easiest of them all. You never know. But I'm going to a pretty hot spot right now, right, with a lot of, res a lot of resignations. But I will say that uh, immigration is a very important thing. And uh, I, I told them today the EU, the European Union, better be very careful, because immigration is taking over Europe, and they better be very, very careful. And I said that loud and clear. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. President Trump, Radu Tudor, Antena 3, Romania. What yes. will you tell President Putin about this summit and about NATO? Well, I think he's going to see about this summit. This has turned out to be a very successful summit. This is — I think — I think, really, that NATO is more uh, put together right now, is more coordinated, and I think there's a better spirit for NATO right now than perhaps they've ever had. Uh, it's richer than it ever was. The commitments are made. Uh, at a higher level than they've ever been made, and the money to be paid out faster, far faster. You know, the 2 percent was a range, a goal. It wasn't something that they were committed to. Now it's a commitment. There's a big difference, the 2 percent number. And that's why so many people weren't reaching it or hitting it. It was just sort of like this amorphous number out there. Now it's a commitment, a real commitment. Uh, I think he's going to see that there's great unity, great spirit, great esprit de corps. And uh, I think we're going to have a good meeting. Regardless of that, I think we're going to have a good meeting. But this was a fantastic two days. This was a really fantastic — it all came together at the end. And, yes, it was a little tough for a little while. But ultimately, you can ask anybody at that meeting, they're really liking what happened over the last two days. There's a great, great spirit leaving that room. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead, please. Yeah, Jonathan Beale from BBC. I just, just wonder, you think you're going to get along with President Putin at that meeting? Could you just tell us, why do you think that? Is there something you admire about him? And the second question, because you're just about to go to the UK. Well, he's a sir. competitor. He's been very nice to me the times I've met him. I've been nice to him. He's a competitor. You know, somebody was saying, is he an enemy? No, he's not my enemy. Is he a friend? No, I don't know him well enough. 
But the couple of times that I've gotten to meet him, we got along very well. You saw that. Um, I hope we get along well. I think we get along well. Uh, but ultimately, he's a competitor. He's representing Russia. I'm representing the United States. So, in a sense, we're competitors. Not a question of friend or enemy. He's not my enemy. And hopefully, someday, maybe he'll be a friend. It could happen. But I, don't, I just don't know him very well. I've met him a couple of times. And when I did meet him, most of you people were there. Yes. And Brexit. Sorry, sir, because you are going to the UK. What will be your message on Brexit? Well, Brexit is, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about Brexit over the last couple of days, and it seems to be turning a little bit differently, where they're getting at least partially involved back with the uh, European Union. Uh, I have no message. It's not for me to say. I own a lot of property there. I'm going to Scotland while I wait for the meeting. I have uh, Turnberry in Scotland, which is a magical place, one of my favorite places. I'm going there for two days while I wait for the Monday meeting. Uh, but it's, it's not for me to say what they should be doing in the UK. I have great friendships. My mother was born in Scotland. Uh, I have great friendships over there. We have a wonderful ambassador, Woody Johnson. And uh, he's doing it. By the way, Woody's doing a great job. But it's, it's not for me to say. I'd like to see him be able to work it out so it could go quickly, whatever they work out. Is it heartbreaking? Oh, hard Brexit, I see. I thought you said it was heartbreaking. I said, that might be going a little bit too far. Right? Heartbreak. Is it heartbreaking? A lot of things are heartbreaking. No, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, Brexit is Brexit. It's not like, uh, I guess, when you, when you use the term hard Brexit, I assume that's what you mean. The people voted uh, to break it up. So I would imagine that's what they'll do. But maybe they'll take it a little bit of a different uh, route. So I don't know if that's what they voted for. I just want the people to be happy. They're great people. And I do think I have — sure, there'll be protests, because there are always protests. But I think there, there were protests the night of the election both ways. But in the end, uh, we got, a, you know, 206 electoral — 306 electoral votes. And one state that, you know, is interesting, one of the states we won, Wisconsin. I didn't even realize this until fairly recently. That was the one state that Ronald Reagan didn't win when he ran the board his second time. He didn't win Wisconsin, and we won Wisconsin. So, you know, we, we, had, a, we had a great night. Uh, protests, there, there might be protests. But I believe that the people in the U.K., Scotland, Ireland, as you know, I have property in Ireland, I have property all over. I think that those people, uh, they like me a lot. And they agree with me on immigration. And I think that's why you have Brexit in the first place, because of immigration. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Greta Karvala from Finland. What would be the best deal with Putin when you come to Helsinki? And don't you think that your harsh diplomacy, uh, that you are playing in the same goal, to the same goal that Putin, with your harsh diplomacy towards uh, EU and NATO? Well, I, don't, I, you know, I can't tell you what would be the ultimate. What would be the ultimate? Well, let's see. No more nuclear weapons anywhere in the world would be the ultimate, OK? No more wars, no more problems, no more conflict. Let's find a cure to every disease known to mankind or womankind. Uh, that would be my ultimate, OK? And we'll start from there. OK. Yeah, go ahead. Me. There's Mahjouba uh, Nauruzi uh, from uh, Afghan service uh, in BBC World Service. So I would like to ask you, uh, Mr. President, uh, that Afghan president is going to be here. He's so here right now. He's yeah, here. no, he is here. And are you going to meet him? And what have yes. you got to uh, say to him? Gani. And when the war is going to end in Afghanistan, because people are fed up now and no. they want to know. I agree with that. I very much agree. It's been going on for a long time. And uh, we've made a lot of progress, but it's been going on for a long time. We've made a lot of progress in Afghanistan, I will say. Yes, your president is here right now. In fact, he's in the room. When I'm finished with this, I'm going right back into that room. One, one, one question, please, please. Uh, Georgian Public Broadcaster, Mr. President, uh, can you tell us what do you think about future membership of Georgia in NATO, please? Well, at a certain point, they'll have a chance. Not right now. They just left the room. Uh, but at a certain point, they'll have a chance. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Barza Hassan, Barza Hassan, reporter for Kurdistan 24. Uh, are you going to continue to support the Kurdish forces, Peshmerga, in Iraq? Thank you. Uh, I think the Kurds are great people. Uh, they're incredible fighters. They're wonderful, uh, warm, 
intelligent uh, allies in many cases, as you know. It's different groups of people, but they're great people. I really do. I believe they're great people. Yes, go ahead, please. Mr. President, Markus Price working with ARD German TV. Yes. You said um, Putin is, uh, isn't, a comp uh, isn't an enemy, isn't a friend, it's just a competitor. A competitor. Do you consider him as a security threat for Europe or to the U.S.? Thank you. Hey, I don't want him to be, and that's, I guess, why we have NATO. And that's why we have a United States that just had the largest military budget ever, $700 billion approved, $716 billion next year. Uh, no, I, I hope that we'll be able to get along. I've, I've said from day one, whether it's China or Russia, you know, we're working on trade with China right now. And uh, I don't say uh, that's an easy situation, because that's been years of abuse of the United States by presidents, frankly, that allowed that to happen. So I've taken over a lot of bad hands, and I'm fixing each one of them, and I'm fixing them well. But China um, is going to be, I think, very successfully, ultimately taken care of. I have a great respect for their president, as you know. President Xi uh, spent two days there. It was among the most magical two days I've ever lived. Uh, and I think we're going to end up doing something very good with China. Right now, we're in a pretty nasty trade battle, but I think ultimately that'll work out. I really think we have a big advantage. You know, we picked up uh, $8 trillion in value and worth since I became president. And we're close to two times the size of China. A lot of people don't know that. And, uh, you know, we're going to negotiate a fair deal, if that's possible. Okay. And Russia, uh, Russia, I, I think getting along with Russia also would be a very good thing. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Jamal Musavi from BBC Persian TV. We have seen escalation of tension between you and the Iranians. What is your exit plan, Mr. President? I would say there might they be are, an escalation between us and the Iranians. They, I agree they, they with are you. threatening. By the way, they're treating us with much more respect right now than they did in the past. And I think I know they're having a lot of problems and their economy is collapsing. But I will tell you this, uh, at a certain point, they're going to call me and they're going to say, let's make a deal. And we'll make a deal. But they, they are to, they're feeling a lot of pain right now. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait. Uh, Mr. President, uh, do we expect the rise of the Russian influence in Macedonia following the starting of the negotiation process, like we've seen in Montenegro with alleged coup? And what will NATO and United States do to counter the, that Russian influence in the Western Balkans? We never you. talk about our future plans. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you very much. My name is Ala Shali from Rodot TV from Kurdistan, Iraq. My question is about the government uh, uh, of Iraq. Uh, you know, um, after two months uh, election, the government in Iraq has not been formed. What's the role uh, from USA? And you want to talk about Syria in, in um, with President Putin. Um, can I uh, have any information about Kurds in Syria? Thank you very much. So I hope we get along well with Iraq. Uh, we've certainly uh, spent a great fortune in Iraq and many, many lives, thousands and hundreds of thousands of lives, if you think, on both sides, which I always think about both sides, not just our side. And uh, they had an election, and I hope we're going to be able to get along, and we'll see how that goes. We've already been talking to the people that won the election. Uh, I was not in favor of that war. I was very much against that war. I never thought it was a good thing, but uh, that's another deck of cards that I inherited, and uh, we'll do the best we can with it. I think uh, uh, the election was pretty conclusive, and again, we've spoken to them. We'll see what happens. Yes, sir, go ahead. Go ahead. To the next go event, ahead. we have time for one more question. Good. I'm Asia Atrus from uh, Asabah newspaper in Tunisia. I come from a very uh, uh, far country, a small country in northern Africa, Tunisia. My question, uh, Mr. President, you are, we really admire what you are doing in North Africa, and we really wish and hope that something again will be done in the Middle East to avoid people more wars and more blood and more killings in the Middle East with, with a just peace process that gives everyone it's, uh, We're looking for peace, and Africa, as you know, is uh, it's on our very strong list. Uh, but we're looking for peace. We want peace all over. We want to solve problems. We're looking for peace. Africa right now has got problems like few people would even understand. They have things going on there that nobody could believe in this room. If you saw some of the things that I see through intelligence, what's going on 
in Africa. It is so sad and so vicious and violent. And we want peace. We want peace for Africa. We want peace all over the world. That's my number one goal, peace all over the world. And we're building up a tremendous military because I really believe through strength you get, you get peace. But we're, uh, we're going to have a military like we've never had before. We've given out orders for, you know, the best fighter jets in the world, the best ships, the best everything. But uh, hopefully we'll never have to use them. That would be a dream to buy the best stuff, to have the best stuff, to have the best equipment in the world, and to never have to use it would be a really great part of my dream. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I'm going to be going, uh, leaving in about a half an hour. Thank you.